Hey, welcome. It's Jim Walensky from AlteredSpacePhoto.com, and I want to thank Blake for having me here today. Uh, Blake thought it would be a great idea for me to come here and share some of my ideas with you. And what I really want to talk to you today about is approaching a photograph from the standpoint of having a vision before you start. Having a vision makes post-processing so much easier. And it's not that the technical part of it's easier. It's that the decisions that you have to make become easier because you know where you're going. When I'm shooting, when I'm making a photograph, I always start from my imagination. Now, that might mean that I have an idea before I go out, or it might mean that I shoot something and I'm trying to grab on to how I'm feeling in that moment, what struck me in that moment, and that's what drives my process. And I try to carry that through from beginning to end. And I think that's going to become evident, hopefully, as we go on here. So let's take a walk in Scotland. This is the famous lighthouse in Oban Harbor, which you pass by on your way to Mull, the Isle of Mull, if you're taking the ferry. And you can see this was a great day for photography. I'm sure the tourists weren't happy, but we photographers were overjoyed because we got these great skies. And while the light is a little flat, that never really bothers me because I know I can control lighting and post. And I can kind of see the lighting in my head when I'm looking at the scene. So I want this photograph to be about isolation and about this kind of brooding mood that's in the sky. That's what this photo is about. So the first thing that I need to deal with here is that I've got two competing textures, right? I've got this awesome texture in the sky and this texture in the water doesn't really need to be here. So I need to take care of this and I need to make a selection of my water. And it's probably gonna be easier for me to make a selection of these two, this island here and this islet. So I can use the zone system to do that. And if I, grab a darks mask and I hold down my alt key or the option key on a Mac and click, you'll see that this is the result that I get. So I can manipulate this mask to get more isolation between these two things. So we can use a levels command to do that. I cannot put a adjustment layer on a mask, right? However, before Adobe introduced adjustment layers, we used to get uh, all of our adjustments up here in the image menu under adjustments. And here is a levels command. Now, it's important to understand that this is a destructive edit. So it's not like an adjustment layer where you can go back and edit. So you, you, know, you have to get it right or you're going to end up doing it over again. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring my whites up and bring my blacks in. And you can see what's happening. I'm already getting a lot of isolation in the areas that I need to have isolation. Now, I don't really care about what's going on up here. All I care about is what's happening in that water. And I'm just moving my sliders around until, really until I can isolate the edges of these things. So that's what I'm concerned about. I gotta watch to make sure that I don't start to choke my stuff here. And that's pretty darn good. That's even better. And remember that I can always hand blend this when I'm done. So I'm gonna click okay and accept that mask. Now, what I really want is my water and my eyelet selected. So I'm gonna just click on my alt key and bring my and bring the layer back into view. And then next to the left and right bracket keys, there's that forward slash key. If I click on that, I get the quick mask view. And I can zoom in now and start cleaning this mask up. So I'm just going to increase the size of my brush and I wanna paint with black because I wanna paint out, right? Whoops, I don't wanna paint that island out because we need that. So I'm just gonna paint here and here just like this. And then we'll go back in and then clean up some of the, these stray areas in a minute. So I'm painting with a black brush at 100% and my brush is almost completely hard. So just like this, and I'm gonna paint this stuff out here. And we'll come in here and paint this, just like that. That looks good. And this stuff I can get later. I'm just kind of concerned with what's happening in here. So we'll just do this kind of thing, just like that. And 
I'm going to just accept that water there. I don't really care that that's in the mask at all. That's not going to make any difference to my uh, image at the end. And the lighthouse is obviously part of the sky part, really. And we're going to isolate the lighthouse later. So I'm just going to kind of click along my horizon here and just get rid of that. And then we're going to select the horizon on the other side in a minute. So I just need to clean this up. And I want to emphasize that you don't need to make perfect masks in order to make good photographs. So if you have that idea, please let that idea go. The masks that you make need to be good enough to sell the illusion that you're trying to sell. And that's it. And we can hand blend these edges in later if they don't look right. So I'm not really worried about, you know, perfectly matching up this line. All right, so that's pretty good. And I've pretty well got these, this stuff isolated now. So I just need to work along the, the line of my shore here. So we're just going to start clicking. And, you know, my brush edge now is at about 55%. I'm going to make that a little harder. We're going to go up into the 70s. And I'm just going to start clicking and shift clicking along this shoreline to just clean this up. And so with a few clicks, we're going to be done here. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And I'm going to come over here and make a click and here and make a click. And that's good. And I'll just kind of scoot up in here like that and just kind of click along this shoreline until my mask is done. And then we're going to go into the mask view itself and finish cleaning this up. So for here, I got to make my brush a little bit smaller. There we go. And maybe even a little smaller than that, just to get this one last little area here. And click, click, good. And good. Okay. So that's probably pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is just turn off my quick mask view by hitting that same slash key and then hold on the alt or the option key and go back into my mask. And I can see what I need to clean up here. And uh, we're going to make pretty quick work of this. I'm going to make my brush a lot bigger and very hard and just go in here and clean this stuff up. And it's going to be no big deal. All right. So when I'm making masks, and I make a lot of masks. I used to make my living making masks. Um, I don't like to spend a lot of time on them. I spend as little time on them as possible because that means I'm not having fun editing photographs. So making masks can be a real drag um, if you let it. And I see people obsessing over having perfect masks when you don't need to have a perfect mask. So let's jump out here and decide if we need this area here. And yeah, I kind of do. So I'm just going to go back in here again and uh, hold down my alt key and I'll make this smaller and I'm just going to kind of click whoops usually helps if you're using the right color and I'm just going to kind of click around here and just you know get in here with my brush and make this right and then again we can blend this in by hand so I'm not really concerned about it being perfect so that's good enough okay so back out to 100%. I'm going to turn my mask view off. So there we have it. Now I'm going to save this mask by going into the channels palette. And you can see I've got some other stuff saved here. And if I s just drag this down to the new mask icon, it'll keep a copy of it. So I'm going to go back up to my RGB. And uh, I'm actually going to get rid of this layer now. I just needed it temporarily to make a mask. So. I'm going to make a copy of this background layer. And we're going to do something that's kind of radical here. I need to blur this water. But if I try to blur it with just a mask, the edges are going to look funny. And you can try it. But in order to save time, I'm not going to do that. Just trust me on that. So what I'm going to do is grab my marquee tool. And I'm going to make a selection of this lower part of the water. And I'm going into my edit menu. And I'm going to choose content to wear scale and just drag this up over my horizon and accept that. Now I'm still left with a selection here. 
And that's a good thing because what I'm going to do now is go into the filter menu and I'm going to select blur, surface blur. Now, the blur is only going to happen within the borders of my selection. And you can see that my reflection is still preserved and these settings are pretty good. I don't think I'm going to change these. Radius of 73 pixels, threshold of 115. I mean, we can move this around a little bit and see if that makes any difference. That doesn't really matter. So, you know, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to hit OK. Now, just be aware that if you don't have a really fast computer, the surface blur can take over your system for a while. Um, fortunately, I have the uh, supercomputer here, so we're, we're all good. So I'm going to deselect. And now I'm going to make another copy of this background layer and drag it up on top here. Go to my channels pal, or I save that mask and control click on it to activate the mask. And I'm going back to my layers palette and I'm just going to put that on there. So you can see what I've got going on here. And that's pretty darn good. So I need to bring my sky back, obviously. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to grab a brush and I'll just reduce the opacity of this layer, oh, not the mask, just reduce the opacity of this uh, layer here a little bit so that I can see where my horizon line is. And I'm going back up onto my mask here and I'm going to use my brush tool and we'll make this, you know, about a 70, 75 percent hardness, not real big. And I'm just going to kind of paint along my horizon here. So I'm going to click here. And you can see that I'm painting with white because I want to reveal my horizon, right? I'm just going to go to the other end of my horizon here and just hold down the shift key and click and click and click, click. That goes into my mountain now and I'm good. So that's that's my, my horizon. I need to go into this area here just a little bit and I'm going to soften my brush a little more and just kind of draw it. Just kind of blend that in a little bit so it's not so weirded out and i'm not even using a tablet yet i'm just i'm still using my brush so we'll just kind of come along here a little more and just open that shoreline up a little bit and so i know this seems like detail work but these these little details matter it makes a big difference in the way your photograph presents itself in the end okay so that's good and now I'm just going to go and paint out the rest of my blurry water that's we don't need. A little bit on the edge, and now it's a cloud. Okay, good and good. And we're all good back here. All right, so let's just double check and make sure that we're good. And that looks pretty good. I got a little bit of a spot here where it's not showing through so let's just fix that and right there okay good all right so now i fixed my water right and i can bring the opacity of this back up and i can show some of that if i want just a little tiny bit and so really quickly i fix my water that's the biggest problem that i have with this photo the biggest problem that i have to solve so let's zoom in a little bit and we're going to move on to the next thing. Okay, so I want to deal with some of the contrast and things in my clouds. And I want to lift some of these blacks up a little bit because I know I'm going to go ahead and start to darken some of this stuff later on. And I don't want this to get out of hand. So at this point, I'm just going to run the condensed zone system. And we'll let this go. Okay, so what I really need, and I put all my layers in there too, so let's just get those out of there, like that. And I'm gonna move my zone system to the top. So what I really need is my sky, which is four, five, and six. I can see that, and I wanna fix my dark. So let's deal with that first. All I'm gonna do here is just click on this point here and highlight it and just hit my up arrow key a couple of times. You can see what's happening to my blacks. If I go too far, I start to lose all my blacks and I don't, you know, obviously don't want to do that. So all I really want is just a few points just to open up those blacks before and after, before and after, that's perfect. So 
I want to increase the contrast in my sky. And I think a big part of this is that the sky is not dark enough in some spots. So let's just pull this in. Look at that. So that works great. I've got this part over here that's kind of a problem. So I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. Just like that. Just kind of even those tones out. And that looks really great. Now, I only want this on my sky, not on my water. So I'm just going to put a gradient right on the mask. I'm going to grab my gradient tool. And I'm painting with foreground to transparent, which actually is going to be black because I'm going to switch my foreground color. And I'm using a linear gradient. And I want to cover up my water. So I'm just going to start right below the horizon line, hold down the shift key to keep it vertical and go right above the horizon line. And that eliminates that effect from my water. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Now I'm going to get rid of the stuff that I'm not using just to keep my layer stack clean and zones two and three I'm not using. So that's perfect. So let's collapse that and we're going to move on to the next thing, which is adding some general contrast to the sky now and we need to brighten our lighthouse so we're going to do that so if we remember how to measure what we're looking at in our sky that's going to tell us what zones to pick so i'm going to grab my brush tool and i'm going to keep my eye on this luminosity number in the lab display hold down the alt or the option key and start moving around in my sky and i can see that this is all 60s, 50s, 70s. So that tells me this is right in the middle. So I'm going to grab a 456 combined mask and just let that run and I'll bring it to the top just like that. And you can see that that's exactly what I need. So I'm just going to, I'm only looking at the sky now. I'm just going to add some general contrast to that. And you know what I could even do? Let's try this. What happens if I change the blend mode to soft light? That, that's kind of cool. A lot of times part of this is just playing around. So I'm going to grab uh, my gradient tool and do the same thing. I'm going to get rid of my water because I only want this in the sky. So let's collapse that. I've got my gradient tool here and it's a linear gradient and I'm painting with foreground to transparent. My foreground color is black. And so I'm going to click right below the horizon line and just go right above it. And my water is eliminated from that effect. Okay, so now I need to brighten my lighthouse, which means I'm going to have to make a selection of it. And honestly, the best way to do this is with the quick selection tool. I use the quick selection tool all the time. It makes awesome selections. So let's just kind of draw on here and let Photoshop make a quick selection of this lighthouse. And you can see that it's going to do a pretty good job. I'm going to zoom in here. And uh, now we'll make my brush a little smaller and just kind of grab onto some of these areas. I'm just clicking now and you know the size of the brush that you use when you're doing this does make a difference. And again, I'm not concerned with having a perfect selection. I don't need one. And let's just click on the Alt key here and just see if we can't clean up a little bit of this. That'll make our life a little easier. And I can always paint this out with a brush too. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to save this selection as well just by clicking on the Save Selection as Channel button down here. This is a great way to save your masks because you can always come back to them later. You don't have to worry about whether or not they're gone or whether or not they've been altered. They're here in the original state that you created them in. So what I'm going to do now is we'll zoom out a little bit so we can see this in context. And the best way to do this is just with the Levels Adjustment layer. And I'm just going to pull my brights in and just brighten this up just like this and we might pull these darks over just a hair to keep that contrast okay and that looks pretty good right there so I'm going to get rid of this mask because we're going to use the mask that's created here I'm going to control click on it and go up into my layers palette and drop a mask on there and you can see that I've got a nice bright lighthouse now and let's go in and look at this and make sure that that mask is okay and Right? It's not a perfect selection, but it's fine. I've got a little bit of a problem right here. So I'm just going to grab a brush and uh, paint with black. And just erase that a little bit. So just kind of blend that in. You can see we can blend that right in. And it's not a problem. So yeah, this idea that you have to make perfect masks, don't, don't get hung up on that. You don't need a perfect mask. All you need is a mask that's good enough 
to sell the illusion that you're trying to sell. So we've added contrast to our sky and we've taken care of our lighthouse. So I'm wondering if this isn't a little bright up here and up here. So I'm gonna take a brush again and paint with black and just paint, I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit, just paint some of this stuff back a little bit. And I always recommend that you use the biggest brush that you can get away with. Perfect, very nice. And so that takes care of that problem. Okay, we're ready to do a black and white conversion now. So I'm gonna go up into the zone system here and I'm gonna select from the effects section, the black and white conversion. So what we've got here is a gradient map adjustment layer and a color modifier, which is a hue saturation adjustment layer. Now, I kind of prefer to use the black and white adjustment layer here because it's simpler for me and it gives me pretty good control over the color. So I'm gonna replace that and we'll get rid of this color modifier. And I'm gonna accept the default that the gradient is giving me and just modify my colors in my black and white adjustment layer a little bit. So I got a lot of yellow in there and we'll offset that by bringing down some of the green and let's look and see what we've got for blue and cyan. So let's move this over so we can see the whole image and I can darken up some of those dark spots in the sky even a little more. Nothing green in there. Well, not in the sky anyway. And that looks pretty good. So I've got this kind of blowing out on me again and that's probably coming, where is that coming from? So I think that's actually coming from the black and white adjustment layer. So what I'm gonna do is just, oh yeah, just brush that back in that spot a little bit. It's gray already, so we're gonna be good. So let's darken the entry to the water and the entry to the sky. I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer and just pull this down. And I'm looking at the water now, perfect. And I'm gonna move this outside my black and white conversion group and then add a gradient to it. So we're gonna invert the mask and then paint it in with a gradient. Linear gradient, foreground to transparent, and I'm gonna be painting with white because I wanna reveal that adjustment. So I'm gonna start right about here and just kind of paint up into that way. And now that's pretty good. That might be a little heavy handed. So let's undo that and let's start right down here and just paint up. That's better. I like that better. And we're gonna do another one for the sky. So the same way I'm gonna just grab this and pull this down. I'm gonna pull my highlights down too so that I maintain the tonal balance between my darkest darks and my lightest lights. And I can adjust this curve if I want to in a minute, but let's invert it and use the same gradient. And I'm probably gonna start right about here and just kind of come down to there. Maybe we'll come down a little further and that's too much. So let's start here and just come down to there. And that looks pretty nice. Excellent. So I, I'm pretty happy with the way this is going. I just wanna add a little bit more mystical feel to this. So what I want is to kind of flatten out some of these black tones. The matte effect is perfect for that. So all I need to do is just reduce the opacity of this a little bit. Perfect. Actually, I think I might want this on my darks only. So let's go back to the zone system and grab from the tone palette a darks luminosity mask. It's gonna put it up here. I'm just gonna drag the mask down to here and say, yes, replace the layer mask. I don't need that layer anymore. I just needed the mask. And now I can reduce the opacity and you can see that it's only happening in my blacks. So I like that, that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna close this so that we can start to think about making some vignettes now. I like to make vignettes by hand because I don't like canned vignettes. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you grab the lasso tool and you just make an organic selection and it doesn't even really matter what it is because you can modify this with a brush. So that's pretty good. 
And now I'm going to add a curves layer. When I make a curves adjustment layer, Photoshop brings in a mask that's based on the selection that I just made. So if I darken this curve now, the middle darkens, and that's not what I want. I need the opposite, so I have to invert this mask, and then I need to blur that transition, and I'm going to do that with a Gaussian blur. So we're going to choose blur, Gaussian blur. For most cameras, somewhere in the 350 to 450 range is good, depending on the size of your sensor, right? So my ideal setting is right around 400 for this. So I'm going to type in 400, and you can see what I get. It's great. It doesn't look like a vignette. And I'm going to make it look less like a vignette by grabbing a brush and painting with black to bring back some of the stuff that I think is a little heavy-handed, like this left side over here. So I'm going to paint with 20%, and I'm just going to start to paint with black, of course, and just paint back some of this stuff that's a little heavy-handed. And that looks great. So we're going to do a couple more things here. I'm going to add another vignette. Nothing says you can't have more than one, right? So we're going to do it around the lighthouse here. And this part here. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing. Make a curves adjustment layer. And it gives me the mask that I need because I want to make the middle part brighter and I'm going to use the same blur which is up here it's the first item so that's the last filter that you use with the exact same settings which is exactly what I want and now I can brighten this area and I'm not going to go overboard here and I just want to maintain a little bit of that contrast but I just want some more brightness in there so I'm not really happy with the position of that vignette so if I click on this little chain link over here and now click on my mask I disconnected the mask from the adjustment and if I hold the move tool grab the move tool I can move this around now until I put it where I want to put it and that looks pretty darn good so I think what we need to do now is just equalize our histogram a little bit so I'm going to take a look at it and see where we're at and we're looking pretty good. I think we could do it with a little bit more brightening in the center. So let's try one more little trick. I'm going to add a curve and lift this up just like that. Keep some of that contrast in the darker tones like so. And I'm going to invert this mask. Boom. And we're going to add a gradient to this. But this time we're going to use a reflected gradient which gives me an equal fade on my gradient from each side. So in other words, the gradient starts in the middle. And I want to paint white to transparent so that it fades out to nothing in the middle. And I'm just going to click and drag about that much. And I'm holding the shift key down to constrain it. And I'm going to let go. Now, again, I'm not happy with the position of this. So I'll just click on the link here and disconnect that from the layer itself grab my move tool and I can move this wherever I want so I've kind of gotten a little carry away here with my edges and that looks perfect so if I've got some brightening in some other areas that's too bright I can just start to paint this back and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to grab my brush and it's black and we're painting with 20 percent and I'm just going to start to just paint a little bit of this back so that it doesn't get too out of hand. So one last thing that we need to do here, and that's add a color grade. Palette Effects is amazing for that. I like Selenium prints and, um, and silver prints, and they all have this kind of color tone to them. Some are purple, some are green. I prefer the green ones, so I'm going to grab a green color grade here. Uh, that's set to soft light and I'm actually going to reduce the opacity of this quite a bit so we just get a hint of it like that and we're done so I hope that you've been able to see that if you start with an idea and carry that idea all the way through your photograph that you're going to 
have a, a much easier time processing your photos. So if you're interested in finding out more about what I'm doing, I think you're going to be seeing more of me here, I hope. Um, you can check out my website, which is alteredspacephoto.com. Blake, thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for all the teaching and all the hard work that you do. This is Jim Wolninski with Altered Space Photo. Be creative and have fun, and uh, I'll see you down the road.